I need to do a trademark on this. So if any IP lawyers listening, I'm interested. I didn't eat lunch. Now, if for any of your viewers, this like I don't look so elegant while eating. Please be. <laughs> I have seen portfolios these days with 100, 200, 300 funds. At that point, you're not tasting anything. You're holding the whole market. Hey, thanks so much for joining in. You're watching NDTV Profit, and this is Money Wise. My name is Alex Matthew, and usually on this program, we talk about money. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing here. I am at Maharaja Bhog in Lower Perel, Mumbai, and this is an all-you-can-eat thali restaurant that was founded by Ashish Maheshwari in 2011. It just so happens that my guest on today's program speaks about the investments that you make and compares it with food. She says that it should be as simple as dal chawal. In fact, here she is right now. Hi, Radhika. Hello, Alex. How are you? What fun! What fun! This is about. The most fun finance interview I am likely to do, and there's actually food. <laughs> In case my viewers did not know, and I don't know where they've been staying if they didn't, Radhika Gupta, Chief Executive Officer of Edelweiss Mutual Fund. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me on Money Wise. Thank you. The genesis of this conversation uh -huh. is your comment that you made uh, about rice and dal. Dal yeah, chawal. Dal chawal it is. And it's gone viral. It's gone super viral. I. I've got promoters telling me dal chawal is a business model. I've got rice companies saying I should be a brand ambassador. <laughs> I need to do a trademark on this. So if any IP lawyers listening, I'm interested. There you go. All right. What is this? I... Oh, lovely. Okay. This is nice. So I'm told that this is the donation that you make. Wow. One rupee. Very nice. From each person goes to oh, a donation. I'm going to do ten rupees. Very good. Because it's festive season. Absolutely, and that's where we're talking. You know, I want to understand why you think this entire concept has gone viral. Why has dal chawal gone viral? I've been thinking about it. I think there's a couple of reasons. One is food is probably the easiest way to connect because we Indians we love our food, yes. right? You know, a good yeah. wedding is about Our food. All our occasions are about food, so that's that. The second thing is, I think dal chawal is very unique and yet very common. You know, you'll have a Gujarati dal, and you'll have a Sindhi dal, and you'll have a Andhra dal, and an Assam dal. Hmm. But it's a very it transcends borders, geographies, and finally, right? There's a definition of comfort food in all of our life, right? Yes. It may be mac and cheese if you're American, and it may be spaghetti and tomato sauce, or pasta and tomato sauce if yeah. you're from another part. But for us, dal chawal is very comfort food. Thank like, you. thank you. Kesar, okay. Chandan and kesar. Chandan and kesar. That's very nice. So it's very traditional. We've got the tikka and everything. We've got the tikka. We've got the kesar. It's ah. all. We've got chas. And it all relates to what you were just pointing out. It's very traditional and. I think there are so many parallels, Radhika, that you can draw between food and investments. There are actually. I think there are so many parallels that you can draw between life and money in general. Mm -hmm. um, because good investing practices and good life practices are broadly kind of the same. But yeah, I think the reason dal chawal have a scot on is it's very simple, it's very accessible, and ultimately we all love a good bowl of dal chawal. Like. My favorite is jeera rice and pur dal, and I'm very particular about the tadka. And when you're sick, that's yeah. the best thing to eat. Yeah, and the the other combination of dal chawal, which is khichdi, is also a very popular food, yeah. which is essentially dal chawal in a one pot meal. There's some great fund analogies there also, but yeah, it's when you're sick, you eat khichdi. But what we're going to have today is a full fledged thali. Okay. Oh I hope you've kept your stomach relatively empty because yeah, I didn't eat lunch. Now, <laughs> if for any of your viewers, this like. 
I don't look so elegant while eating. Please be forgiving. No, I I have actually pointed to someone in the back. Thank you, to to warn me if I've got something stuck in my teeth, Radhika. So this Chandan water is very nice. It is very nice. It yes. is super nice. So uh, all you can eat. All you can eat. There's going to be a lot of analogies that we draw, as I mentioned. But you know, I want to talk about. Uh, the investment landscape because it's changed so dramatically. Of course, the thali has stayed more or less the same uh -huh. uh, over the last many, many, many decades. But even in the time that you've spent in the industry, mm. it's changed dramatically. But before we get to that, yeah, I heard that uh, you didn't start your career in this industry. You started your career career in the culinary industry, yeah. Radhika. A culinary industry is being a little too kind to me. But yeah, <laughs> my first business venture. Was actually a restaurant out of a dorm, and I think I was 19 or 20 then. I was at Penn, and at that point, you either had college pizza at 10 o'clock at night, right, or like the Indian food was very not this kind of good Indian food. It was like bad naan and what they call <laughs> saag paneer and tikka masala in the U.S., right? right? So we said, why don't we do a pickup service where you have home style food? And we were two partners. I didn't know how to cook. I would call my mom every night for recipes. Okay. And then I would cook the dal, and I would be belowing rotis. So for one, no, two semesters, I was belowing a hundred rotis a day. It's how? called Mitch Madness. So two. Oh, it was called Mitch Madness. Yeah, because March Madness is a big American thing. So this right. was like Mitch Madness, March Madness, and I was studying. I was doing doing two degrees. And then at night, I was cooking from ten to twelve, serving and doing bhartan after twelve. This is not what they say when when they say oh, that gosh. you should find a job when you go uh, study abroad. No, right, this is sure. not what they and say. And my husband, who was my boyfriend then, said that I used to come to class the next day smelling of garam masala. <laughs> Probably doesn't sound very good, right? <laughs> Which is, and we've come a long way since that yeah, point. Yeah, we've done better. Yes, but uh, we were talking about how the landscape has yeah. changed. How do you say? How do you define that? How do you describe that? I think it's like with many things with India's prosperity, the options have just opened up, right? So your dining landscape has changed. You have so many more options. Your investing landscape has changed. I think 20, 30 years ago, when you looked at the mutual fund industry, they were broadly like. Active equity funds and income funds. Yeah, he was that. Yeah. And who active? Maybe there was either growth managers or value managers. They were bucketing the small buckets. Now, it's actually a lot. Explore it. There's active equity, passive equity, active debt, passive debt, hybrid. Within passive, there's smart beta, there's yeah. single factor, multi factor, regular index funds. There's thematic within thematic. There's so many themes. There's international funds. Actually, I think the landscape is really vaster than all of the stuff that we are seeing. And by the way, I also think the landscape is so vast that you need more help. You need more help. I, so, and these are all aspects that I want to cover because when you talk about it, diversity mm -hmm. is the spice of life. Yeah. Or variety is the spice, spice of life. Right. Diversity is great for your mm -hmm. portfolio as well, but you shouldn't have everything. Yeah. Right? Where do you draw the line, and how much do you have of everything? Because these guys, <laughs> these guys are experts at putting food on the table. They're giving you a little bit of everything. Yeah, thankfully, that's probably little. good. Yeah, but so I, I get this. And by the way, I'm a small eater. Eater, so am I. I, I, although I love thalis because I feel I get to taste a little bit of everything, and I get bored eating one sabzi. Yeah. I think from a portfolio perspective, however. There is a middle balance between the thali. Like a thali with fifty items is probably too much of a thali for exactly. people like us. Yeah. So a portfolio with fifty, sixty funds. And Alex, I have seen portfolios these days with hundred, two hundred, three hundred funds. At that point, you're not tasting anything. You're holding the whole market. In fact, that's what you uh, pointed out. You said there was uh, uh, what twenty-seven, thirty thousand rupees in split into. Yeah, yeah. There was an SIP portfolio I saw where someone was doing a thirty thousand a month SIP. And it was across like thirty funds, and of course, half of them were what I call pickle and chutney funds, yeah. um, which were your infrastructure or deeply thematic stuff, and yeah. very little of it was this roti and the normal stuff that we should be. Eating. And you were pointing out that seventy percent or seventy eighty percent should be dal chawal. I I think so. I think seventy eighty. I mean, if you look at the composition as this thali gets mm. set up, and you can replace chawal with roti. Yes. A bulk of what we are eating is really grains mm. and sabzi and dal. Yeah. All this pickle chutney stuff, and they haven't gotten dessert yet. But I'm yes. sure they're not good. Ah, uh, Ira, huh? 
But I'm sure they're not getting me eight sweets, right? Yeah. Oh, they're getting us one and there's a little bit of in chutney. This is actually a perfect proportion, right? Yeah. 80% core yeah. and the balance is... So, but let's also talk about what... And before we get into some of the other analogies and there's a sweet, right? There's I'm already eyeing it. But... And there's yeah. another sweet. There you go. Oh God. Is that padam ka halwa? <laughs> Moong, Moong dal halwa. That is my favorite halwa. I... I want to overload on sweets today. <laughs> so, but before we get into some of the other aspects, let's define what this dal chawal should yeah. be, right? In, and there are in, lots of myths around it. Yes. So, why don't you explain what that is about? So, when I make dal chawal, you know, people sort of sometimes think all oh, dal chawal is only passive, it's only active, it's a yeah. category of funds. It's a, it's a philosophy and please start eating, yeah, I will start. also start eating. Um, Dal chawal is the idea that what you buy and what should be core to your portfolio is stuff that is not seasonal. Mm. It's stuff that is easy to digest, hence dal chawal. It is stuff that is time tested and can last the test of time. So it's not very seasonal. It's not very cyclical in nature. Right. I think that is core to dal chawal. Mm. And many times now these days when I'm launching funds, you know, we have some fund launch going on. A user is writing back to me saying, Madam, is dal chawal hai ya nahi hai? Dal chawal nahi hai. Mm. And I think the definition of it is, is it easy to understand, is it easy to digest and will it last the test of time? Mm. Does it count on just being, is it flavor of the season or is it not? And all thematic sectoral is flavor of the season. Is flavor of the season. So all thematic sectoral and even within that, you know, there's some very niche ideas being launched that are like the tiniest piece of chutney here because it will be a thematic fund with 10 stocks Four are going to be 60% of the portfolio and the sector is at 70-80 PE. I don't want to name specific. And, and we've seen uh, several of these schemes launch and then shut within the first couple of weeks. And we've seen several of these schemes get a lot of collections. Absolutely. Because talk about the last few months, Radhika. We're talking about a situation where now thematic sectoral has become by far and away the largest actively managed category. In, in the equity category and that for me is a little scary. Oh, it's become the largest? It is the largest. Wow. Half the flows this year in the industry were into thematic and sectoral stuff. It used to be flexi cap and it now flexi cap and is flexi the second. cap is your definition of dal chawal. Exactly. And flexi cap is now the second largest thematic and sectoral for the last couple of months. I didn't realize that. It's, it's and you know, even within thematic and sectoral use, thematic and sectoral used to mean financials, hmm. consumption. Yes. These are still broad. absolute broad themes. Consumption is 40% of the economy. Yeah. Tech is a large theme. But now it's become very, very narrow sectors where, as I said... Business said, cycle funds. Well, business cycle, again, is actually very broad-based because business cycle is 40... Sto business cycles, many of these are, I would say, dal chawal with tatka. They are mm. diversified funds in a different flavor. But you take a very narrow sector, like future of transportation. Mm. That is what I call chutney. Well, okay. Fair point. That is extremely chutney. And that shouldn't be what? It should be less than 20%. And the whole aggregate should be about 20% of your portfolio. All of the chutney, right? Because if you think about it, if you have 20% of this meal as chutney, it's not going to taste very good. It's not going to taste very good. Okay. So, the other aspect that we talk about is the role of the people serving you. Mm -hmm. You had Ishwarji come and explain what each of these components were. Ultimately, when you walk into a restaurant, Radhika, and you have the, the restaurant only serving Italian. Of course, you yeah. know that you're walking into an Italian restaurant. Yeah. But you can't have Italian every day. And I think in every restaurant, we go and ask for recommendations. Yes. Because even within a restaurant, there are things that work for your palate. There are things that don't work for your palate. You know, you were talking about the investment landscape expanding. Yeah. People keep telling me, so many funds have launched these days. So many NFOs are going on. And I'm like, we have a couple of restaurants within each category. And that is where you go. Yeah. And usually you take recommendations from your friends. And even if there's a new restaurant, you will likely look up reviews, you, right? You, you'll do some checks on reviews. You'll Which, check with a couple of people who went there. And the, the parallel to draw is NFOs. Yeah. You don't know what the fund manager has done necessarily. And you don't go to every new restaurant. And how much of your diet is new restaurants? Yeah. You know, I often talk about NFOs, speaking of... I keep telling people that you shouldn't be investing in NFOs because you want to know the track record. But yeah. unfortunately, a lot of people jump into NFOs because they think that they're getting an advantage. Why do you think that is? So I, and look, I run a mutual fund company, so people will tell me all kinds of things. I think the fundamental thing is you should never rush into anything 
in an investing world. I always tell everyone there is no investment opportunity that is going to run away. Mm. Do it, understand it and then do it. I also say that things are not so black and white, right? All NFOs are not bad, all yeah. NFOs are not good. Sometimes really cool new ideas are launched, sometimes funds are launched and they only take money in the NFO. Now, again, I, I'll give you the restaurant analogy. People bash AMCs for doing NFOs. AMCs are like a promoter of restaurants. We have to open restaurants, right? Mm. Because that is our business model. There is that line, na, kyunki saas bhi kabhi bahu thi. Her existing fund kabhi NFO bhi tha, right? Ah. So, it is our job to launch NFOs because we have categories, we have a business to build. It's a promoter's job to launch restaurants. It's your job as a consumer to decide when you're going to eat, at what point you're going to eat, how much you're going to eat, if you're going to eat. The worst reason to buy an NFO is the 10 rupee NAV, which yes. is the greatest bloody myth. There is no 10 rupee magic. No, there is no 10 rupee I was going to ask you exactly that. Okay, a new restaurant is launched. Huh. It's going to price you the, the same, same way. So in fact, the restaurant industry might be kind enough to give you an entry discount. discount. In their market, there is no discount. Can you explain that in the in the simplest manner possible? See, the, you know, the point is that when I'm buying, if I'm a new fund and I'm buying a 10 rupee NAV and you're an old fund and you're buying it 50 rupee NAV, if we want to buy new securities in the market, we're buying them from the same market. It's so the same price. Buying, yeah, we're buying the same subsidies in the same market for the same price. So there's no arbitrage. So the 10 rupee NAV myth is false, false, false. So, okay. So there you go. Who better to tell you than somebody who is actually launching these funds in the first place? I launch NFOs, buy them for many reasons, but not but not because of 10 rupees. Not and not because, because there is a price advantage there to There is no price advantage, there is okay. nothing. So, but let's also talk about the lovely food that we have on the table. We've yes. talked about dal chawal, but we must also talk about the sweet. We have yeah. to get to that, Radhika. I know yeah. you've been eyeing it, so have I. I love sugar. I do too, but the problem is too much of it is not a good yeah. idea, especially when you're uh, when you're convincing yourself. Do you think that a lot of us, of course, and this is psychological, yeah. you convince yourself that it's okay to have another bite. It's okay to get up in the middle of the night. I'm going to drink some water, but grab some cake while I'm at it. So I have another thing that people don't know about me is I have a terrible tendency to put on weight. Right. Um, I was actually born double the size of a normal baby. I was born 13 pounds. So my life has been a journey of getting healthier and losing weight. And I really put on weight very yeah. fast. One of the things my mother-in-law taught me, she's very slim, is portion control. Right. And I really believe everything in life, na, in controlled amounts and in the right amounts is okay. That's that's my own fitness formula. If you So that's why even when I talk dal chawal, I know that sugar exists. I always say it's 70-80% because I know there is that old Ranbir Kapoor dialogue na, that life mein sirf dal chawal nahi khayenge, thoda hakka noodle, thoda meetha, thoda yu chahiye. <laughs> so, I don't say not, don't be experimental hmm. with your money. If there's a new concept, if there's a thematic idea, as long as this stuff is limited to 10-20% of your money. For instance, my own Shark Tank investments, hmm. uh, they are my non-dal chawal. Right. They are my sweets. They are my monkey dal ka halwa and this amazing looking custard which I am going to eat. They are that. Uh, but they are not going to be more than 20% of my portfolio. And your risk taking ability is very important towards risk taking capability and ability. Both, 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 both are very important. In fact, I mean, in my own case, I know I went from being a lot more conservative a few years ago to a lot more aggressive now <laughs> because obviously the corpus is built up and my husband and I have a virtually fully paid up home. Right. So then, so we moved from eating a lot more BAF in our diet mm. to a little more equity in our diet. I think seven, eight years ago, if you had asked me to do a lot of unlisted startup investing, all this kind of stuff, I would have said my body can't handle yeah. it. Now it can handle 10, 15 percent of it. Mm. So everything that is done in moderation, I feel in the right quantity, including food is OK. So by the way, I love sugar. I need to eat some of it every day. This is really <laughs> bad. But I either eat a very small quantity, so I will ask, you know, for one spoon of ice cream, literally one spoon of ice cream, or I'll eat it at lunch, not at midnight. Uh, the other aspect that I want to talk about, of course, is that um, just like when you're eating, obviously you, you, you're watching your waistline, you're watching your weight, sometimes yeah. you have to take care of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not enough. That's not. Uh, and uh, they say that you need to have a periodic medical examination. Mm -hmm. That same can be said 
for your portfolio as well. Yeah, and I have a couple of rules there. So I think daily checking your portfolio is like is counting that. calories in every yeah. meal. I had a roommate once. Yes. And every time before she ate, she would weigh her food on a calorie meter and check the calories. I think it's a recipe to drive yourself crazy. And increasingly with investments, I feel people, the NAV of a fund will fall once a day. But thanks to guys like you in the media, not you specifically, WhatsApp, social media, you will feel that fall in your portfolio so many times a day. So you should do an annual review. Yeah. I think there are two types, of, like for my portfolio, there are two reviews I do. I do an annual review to mostly check the quantum of investments I'm doing. Mm. In fact, at the end, once I know my increments, bonus, how my compensation is changing for the year, my husband and I write down the family expenses. Right. That this is what we're spending, this is what we're going to earn. We readjust our SIP. So it's almost like readjusting your diet after your, you visit the doctor, you've got your health checkup, yes. you readjust your SIP. So we do that. We don't make very large changes on funds, you know, a few yeah. funds here or there, a little bit of asset allocation, rebalancing. Once in three to five years, we do a large structural review of our portfolio, which is when we say, What's doing okay, well? I need to check. I've crossed the 40 milestone or the 50 milestone or the, you know, whatever. I need to take a stock of my health, readjust yeah. long-term habits. Yes. They will review funds. Okay, I've given this fund five years. Now has it performed. Hmm. Okay, I can be a lot more aggressive. I'll fundamentally change my asset allocation. So, at least I believe in two kinds of reviews, an annual review and a more structural deep, deep going deep kind of review so the uh, please uh, yeah, yeah, I you know you be, i've been i've been hogging and you've been you have uh, the pleasure of talking, hogging yeah, and because i like to listen more than i talk no you just like to eat <laughs> that's my excuse but uh, the other aspect of course is uh, if you've got something that is working and you do a step up right you, yeah. for you uh, you you do that deep review and you you take those big calls mm -hmm. But sometimes the simple plans work, right? Yeah. When you do a step up, every time you uh, you earn more, you increase your mm -hmm. SIP or you increase your investment. Uh, the same way that uh, if you like something on your plate and mm. if it fits within the plan, plan, you ask for something more, you ask for more of this. I just asked for more of this amazing Chandanka thing. So that's another, uh, that's a very simple and, uh, concept that works. It's, it's, it's a good concept because suddenly, you know, when you acquire wealth, and I'm going to get trolled for saying this, you suddenly feel the need, as you've gotten richer, that I'll dal chawal chhod ke na sushi or avocado toast rose khaunga. And the reality is, we've realized all of us have grown up with a certain set of diets, things, behaviors that work for your body. Yeah. Now, with me, for instance, I have eight to ten funds. Most people will have five, six, seven, eight, ten funds. Mm. These are the core funds in your portfolio. These are your dal chawals. If you just increase the SIP in those funds, why do you want to add new characters? to your play when a certain set of things is working. It's the same thing, you know, by the way, people get richer and they're like, oh, mutual fund is too boring. I was going to ask you. It drives me nuts. But we've spoken about this, right? The whole idea of creating, I know it's called a new asset class. I don't yeah. necessarily like the idea of calling it an asset class. Yeah, I don't think it's an asset class. It's not an, it's a, it's a mode of investment. Yeah. It's, a, it's a vehicle to invest. Uh -huh. And so, what do you think about that? Because it's likely once it comes through, mm -hmm. of course, a lot of work probably needs to be done. Yeah. It's another way for you to invest. Of course, PMS uh, is an mm -hmm. option as well. Uh, it's a middle ground. But then if there is the same product, mm -hmm. can we truly do long shot, um, you know, so, effectively in India? So I'll tell you, I have been very excited about new asset class. Mm. But uh, you bring up a very important point. If any platform, whether it's PMS, whether it's AIF or new asset class, if you're going to use the platform to just manufacture the same stuff yeah. on a new platform. There's no platform as efficient as the mutual fund platform. And I think the scale has said that. Where I'm excited about new asset class is the flexibility that you will have to do a few different things. And let me give you examples that we've been toying mm. with. And of course, the devil in the details is not out. So I don't know how much you can do. But for instance, in fixed income, we don't do credit products on our MF platform at all. Right. We don't believe a daily liquidity platform can do a new asset class. Right. However, if I have the flexibility to change liquidity terms, to maybe run things closed-ended, then for our more nuanced set of customers, I might be open on the fixed income side to being more experimental than I am. Long short, mm. they're saying you can't take leverage, so yes. that is contained, so it's not as aggressive as the AF platform. 
uh, the amount of derivative exposure also you have is I think you can't be more than 25% net short. So we have to see what comes out. But maybe I can do a few new products. But the key is I'm not going to use that platform to manufacture what my mutual fund platform has because for that platform, there is no platform like mutual mm -hmm. fund. And ultimately, simplicity is absolutely yeah. key. I think we've covered quite a few bases and this food has been calling to me. The food has been calling All of us. this, all through this okay. conversation. Okay. Hopefully, Radhika, the conversation that we've had is going to encourage people to go out and eat the simple thali because yes. that's one aspect of it's this. what we've been eating for generations. <laughs> it's culture. Um, it's good for us. And the other aspect is to look at Dal Chawal in their investments and yes. that really is going to be the key as well. Yeah. This was Money Wise. Thank you so much, Radhika, Thank for you. joining me on this Thank conversation. Thank you and happy eating and happy festive season. Happy festive season to you and yours as well. Thank and you. And to you tuning in from home, here's wishing you and yours a very, very happy festive season. Love and good wishes from all of us here at NDTV Profit.